Hey guys, this is Mr. Roxy coming at you live from Palm Beach in Florida. It is Thursday and uh, we're almost at the end of May. And uh, what I thought to do as a follow up to the previous video I made, uh, some of you guys um, commented as you usually do. And uh, as I frequently say, your comments are better than my content. So uh, I like reading the comments and I like to see what you guys offer. I went into some of the co uh, comments and I looked at some of the stocks that you guys had recommended and uh, John Hibbs said, I own both LPI and EGY. This is just a few hours ago today. This is LPI one today. Vinit sent me a note and he said, uh, would you be kind enough to cover VTNR? Taco said, um, what do you think about BPT? And uh, Ernest said, um, what is the difference between Valerio? It's actually Valero and Occidental Petroleum. And why is Valero doing so much better than Oxy? Actually, uh, Oxy is doing better than Valero. Um, I'm not going to go into that one right now, but uh, with the exception of Valero, um, of these five stocks, and Valero is actually the only one I know a little bit, the others were relatively new to me. So what I thought to do is take a few minutes and uh, compare these and sort of see how they, uh, you know, sort of stack up one against the other. So uh, firstly, um, they're all publicly traded, obviously, uh, four of them on the New York Stock Exchange. The odd one out is Vertex Energy which trade, trades on the NASDAQ. You can see the uh, sort of current pricing in terms of what it will cost you to buy one share of each of these right now. Laredo at 71 bucks. Balco is at $7. Uh, BP, the, that's actually not BP as in British Petroleum, the original BP, but it's the Prado Bay Royalty Trust at uh, almost 20 bucks. Valero is selling for 129 and Vertex is at $14. If you look at the actual industries that they're in, um, Laredo is uh, U.S. oil exploration and product. Dalco is international, and uh, BPT is a U.S. royalty trust. And uh, Valero refining and marketing, and Vertex is an interesting uh, sort of odd one out for me. Pollution controls. I was not previously really aware of that, and had not been paying much attention to that at all. How about the ratios? I'm going to get into these in just a minute, so uh, you can ignore them uh, for the purposes of this particular slide here, but. Um, Certainly two of them, Laredo and Dalco, look quite inexpensive and attractively priced with a price earnings ratio of five and a half and seven respectively. For the technical guys, the 20-day uh, rule stochastic. Um, remember, if it's uh, above 80%, it seems overbought. So both, uh, not both, but, but actually uh, all four of um, Laredo, Dalco, BB, uh, the Royalty Trust and Valero seem to be overbought right now. And Vertex seems to be one that you might want to get into if you base your buying criteria on the 20-day uh, raw stochastic, uh, which would be a very limited opinion in my uh, very humble opinion to use as a benchmark to make a buying decision, yes or no. The analysts, what do they say? 56% say buy Laredo. Um, the others, much more positive, 80%, 80%, 100%, 80%. So um, take that for what it's worth as well. So uh, if you line up the... Uh, 20-day raw stochastic with um, the analyst analyst opinion, then you might say, uh, you know what, Vertex probably looks uh, like the winner here. But that's from a technical point of view, excluding the PE ratio, and obviously based on what some of the analysts are saying. If we look at performance, so once again, I'm going to ignore the uh, five-day and one month, and we look at the three-month here. If you own these, you'd be happy probably with all of them. The underperformer here over a th three-month period was Laredo, but it did okay sort of over the last six months, 32%. But look at these, some of the um, outliers here. So uh, the BP Trust came in at 63% and uh, Vertex, 141% um, over the last three months. How about six months? You have Belco at 120%, but look at this one, 400% for BP, the uh, Royalty Trust, and almost 200% for Vertex Energy. So if you were long in almost any of these, maybe uh, the odd one out, uh, not that you can complain about a six month return of 32%. Well, some people might. Um, or if you owned, um, you know, uh, EGY and LPI, then uh, maybe you would say uh, LPI has been underperforming, but that's only compared to EGI, never mind the rest of the market. Yeah, this is an interesting slide, key statistics. So um, we're looking here at market cap. This is expressed in thousands, so it's 1.2 billion. 403 million, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. The reason for these green arrows here is look at the market cap of the company compared to its annual sales. So here you have a $1.2 billion company, 
generating $1.4 billion in sales. Uh, it's quite a disconnect between the stock price and its performance. One of the reasons why is this big green circle here, because uh, even though they're making that much or generating that much revenue from sales, they are losing $86 million. Um, EGY looks a little better from that point of view. Uh, it's got a market cap here of $403 million, and it's generating sales of about half of that. Um, it's always an interesting number to look at if you uh, look at the uh, sort of sales to book value. Um, it's just another benchmark that you can use to say uh, sort of where is this stock priced in terms of where it might be or should be. Vertex, much like uh, Laredo, they're also losing money, even though it's uh, generating a lot of uh, revenue. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take a quick flyover on two of these and then a slightly deeper dive on three of the others. Uh, so I'm going to cover basically very briefly all five of them, which is tricky to do. It's tough to keep track of what you're looking at and then uh, potentially try to pick one. Most re recent earnings positive, so I'm not going to dwell on that. But, so let's look at these two of them just very, very briefly. You can buy uh, BP. This is the trust, not BP as in British Petroleum, uh, or the original BP, 20 bucks, $416 million market cap. It's trading at its all-time high. So if you want to take a chance here and think it's going to run a little higher, uh, you can do that. The PE ratio is 18, so a little bit rich for me. I want to see it under 15. A beautiful dividend of almost 10%. So if you are chasing a dividend, $1.76 on an annualized basis based on the current stock price is yielding almost 10%. So it's pretty good. Uh, not a lot of uh, institutions in this one at 2.7%. It's quite low. It's uh, actually quite surprising to think that more institutions might be uh, interested in having a position in this, but it might also be because it's a royalty trust. Laredo, uh, you can buy currently for around 75 bucks. Uh, it's sort of in the middle of that 52-week range, just right of center. It had a recent high in the last 52 weeks of $99. So there might be a little bit of run rate there, or of course it could pull back a little bit more. Um, usually when you see stocks that have been flying quite high, you can expect them to draw back a little bit at some stage. It's got a market cap of 1.3, so it's not a very small company, but uh, certainly by no means a major or a super major. The PE is 12, it's more attractive for me. It doesn't pay a dividend. If you're chasing a dividend, you don't want to be in Laredo. 71% uh, held by institutions. So um, this is one of those stocks where the uh, institutions have been buying uh, and increasing their position. Um, and, uh, you know, it's kind of steady eddy at this stage. I, I'm not too sure. Um, and I don't know, obviously, no one can predict where the stock price is going, but when the institutions are heavily invested in the, uh, in the uh, equity, uh, it's probably uh, had its good bull run uh, and its best days in terms of quick money is behind it. And you would expect um, it to be more sort of a market-related performance going forward. But once again, that's just one benchmark. The short interest at 8% is kind of high. It's uh, higher than usual. So there are uh, quite a large number of people, 8% of the outstanding float of common shares outstanding is quite a high percentage of people thinking that this is going to pull back. How about this graph? This is ridiculous. Uh, over a one-year period, and this is the, uh, the trust year, 433% in this green line over here is Vertex, 250 not too bad on the blue line either, EGY. You know, this is a very, very good performance, Valco. If you are in any of these, you are probably happy. I mean, the, the uh, sort of laggard here, right at the bottom, the gray one, LPI is Laredo, 36% over a one-year period. Uh, not bad at all, but how about this one? Three years. If you had held Vertex Energy for the last three years, you are up over 800%. And on EG, EGY, which is Valco, have been up 400%. This is a phenomenal performance. And guys, when I get into a situation where I have stocks that deliver this type of a return for me, I, I always will take my money off the table. In fact, I might even take all my original investment off the table, leave the rest, the house's money to just run. That's just me. You guys can tell me in the comments what uh, you would do or what you think. So a slightly deeper dive here on the other three. So I'm firstly looking at Valco. You can buy it for seven bucks right now. It's sort of trading just off its all-time high, market cap of only $424 million. Um, so uh, not, not a large company by any stretch. Very attractive uh, PE ratio of only four and a half. 42% uh, held by institutions. It's kind of a better number than the one we looked at a few minutes ago, which was 70%. So um, as a quick snapshot here, this looks pretty good. 
sort of uh, in, in, in the context of, of uh, using some of those things as a benchmark. EGY, so Valco is one of the most profitable companies in the oil and gas consumables fuel industry with a net margin of almost 37%. Its operating margin and net margin are amongst the strongest of any peer, while its gross margin is above the industry median. I like companies that make a profit. And in this particular instance, there's not a lot of things that uh, sort of turn me off Valco Energy. If we look at the gross profit margin, we're looking on a trailing 12 month basis, two times the industry average. We look at operating profit margin more than three times the industry average. And if you look at the net profit margin over a trailing 12 month period, look at this industry median six, six and a half, and um, Valco at almost 37. Financial strength, and uh, you'll notice that on all of these, I'm just looking at the uh, snapshot, the company summary, and then I'm looking at profitability and financial strength. On financial strength, I'm looking at debt. The EGY uses little or no debt in its capital structure. Companies that don't use a lot of debt are very seldom, if ever, go out of business. This is a pretty good picture. Uh, you know, a small concern would be the fact that um, as profitable as they are and uh, with hardly any debt, why on earth do you have a quick ratio of less than one? Uh, a quick ratio simply means that um, they have less cash on hand than what they have current liabilities. Now, of course, they're making money and, they, and they're running out of profit, so it's not really a problem and it's close to one. But really, guys, I mean, you don't have to fly close to the sun when you are running a really good company and you're making a lot of money and you're doing a, 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 an outstanding performance in terms of driving sales. Uh, there's no reason for you to sit on a quick ratio of less than one that should be higher. Interest coverage, on the other hand, is above 1, 1.26 uh, and 1.26 uh, time is enough to cover debt. And of course, they don't really have much debt, so it's just current liability. So I want to see that quick ratio improve. Um, other than that, not too many complaints. Vertex Energy, next one up. So you can buy it for 14 bucks. It's trading near its all-time high. It's uh, almost a billion dollar company. Uh, very, very big number of uh, shorts here. So you got a 31% short interest on the outstanding float. So um, this is a warning signal. If you are in Vertex uh, and you've enjoyed this really, really fantastic run, uh, take profit. Uh, for sure, I wouldn't even hesitate to say take profit. So I wouldn't suggest necessarily buying Vertex here. Uh, I would say if you have an existing position in Vertex and you've enjoyed this run over the last year or so or more, take some profit. You don't have to sell it all. Just uh, you know, take some cash, hedge it that way. Uh, I would do that for sure. From a profitability point of view, VTNR, so Vertex has a poor profitability characteristic in comparison to its peers. Uh, this is a hopeless performance. So um, uh, once again, if, you, if you've made profit here, take some profit. Gross profit margin, the industry median is 35, Vertex only 3%, and then uh, operating profit margin, net profit margin over the last trading 12 months, sitting on a negative. Not good, not cool at all. Not, not in terms of the performance that I showed, showed you at the start of the presentation. So Vertex has many, many red flags where the, where the others don't really. Financial strength, it's capital, uh, debt to capital ratio of 30%. It's kind of pretty much in line with the industry norm. You can see that over here, the industry is 37, Vertex is 30. Uh, if you look at the quick ratio, unlike the previous example, uh, 3.8, excellent story. They have enough cash in the bank to easily cover their uh, current liability. So quick ratio, just as a refresher, is, is cash versus current liabilities. The current ratio is um, your, your cash and cash equivalent. So in other words, accounts receivable and things like that compared to your current liability. So quick ratio, current ratio is not the same. Either way, you want them both to be above one and four is pretty good. Interest coverage is uh, terrible at uh, negative 0.93, so almost negative 0.1. Uh, so the quick ratio in this particular instance right at the top of the page, it shows us the balance sheet can make up for the shortfall because Vertex does not earn enough on a day-to-day -day from an operations point of view in order to service its debt. It's a horrible picture. Uh, as I've said, what, three times now? Uh, if you're in Vertex and you've made some money, take some profit off the table. Valero, so uh, for the people who are into uh, sort of steady eddy, uh, you're not gonna get rich if you buy Valero, uh, but what you will have is a very consistent, good performer. Uh, Valero is kind of like if I, um, uh, divorce it from the uh, sort of energy uh, category as, as a whole. I could say it's more like, a, a, let's say like a Coca-Cola, sort of a Warren Buffett's Coca-Cola. Valero is not going to make you rich. I actually had a position in Valero uh, probably about five years ago, and uh, the stock was trading at about um, 55, 60 bucks. 
So it's doubled since that period of time. And what that simply means is mathematically, uh, if you achieve a, um, a growth rate of 15% per year, then every five years, your stock is basically going to double. Now, of course, if you also reinvest your dividends, you can do even better. But a quick snapshot here, Valero, this is a big company. It's a $52 billion company. It's got a PE ratio of 20. It's too high for me. I want it less than 15 before I buy into something like this. Uh, decent dividend, 3%. Uh, 77% held by institutions. This is literally just a steady eddy company. It's trading at its all-time high. I wouldn't suggest or recommend buying Valero at this stage uh, at this price, 128 bucks. If it pulls back, maybe you can pick up some. But you know, if you want something just uh, sort of like an Exxon or a Chevron, you can you can buy Valero and just hold it and maybe say, you know, I'm going to hold it for the next um, five years or so, and in five years' time, it's going to trade at 250 dollars, and you would have doubled your money again. Uh, profitable on a gross basis, uh, Valero has inline profitability in line with the rest of the industry. Uh, it's underperforming from a gross margin point of view, but it's pretty much in line with the industry. Uh, you know, this, this is not a company that rocks the boat. It doesn't move the earth. Uh, these numbers are pretty poor, uh, but it is a big company, uh, not a bad investment. If you just want to sort of sock away a 3% dividend, which is better than uh, putting cash in the bank where you just lose money. Financial strength, its debt to capital ratio is about 40 it's pretty much in line with the industry, slightly higher. Uh, once again, a uh, shocking quick ratio for a company of the size and scope and scale of Valero. I want to see a quick ratio of one or above. Uh, the industry is, is below one. The industry as a whole is uh, not in a good position in, in terms of quick ratio anyway. However, it doesn't really matter in the instance of Valero because given that the company's operating profits are 9.5 times greater than its interest payments, it'll have little difficulty in repaying debt. Uh, it has been reducing its, its debt pretty much like all the super majors as they have been printing money due to the um, high prices of, uh, in this particular instance, uh, mostly WTI and Brent. So guys, that's kind of a wrap on, on these. If you, uh, if you still have positions on these or if you have positions, including uh, our five friends that I mentioned at the start, um, let us know uh, sort of where you're at, what you're thinking. Uh, I've given you some of my thoughts. And uh, of course, if you like the content, uh, please remember to hit the uh, subscribe button so that we can grow this community because we already have a community of almost 3,000 like-minded energy fossil fuel burning investors. And uh, let's see if we can work together to uh, build some generational wealth over time. Thanks for staying with me. Thanks for watching. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.